Does the 4% rule for retirement withdrawals still hold water? That's what I'm thinking. Back in the mid-1990s, there was some groundbreaking research by a gentleman named Bill Bangan. And, uh, and it, it, he did research going back uh, several decades and came to the conclusion that the safe withdrawal rate, meaning the amount of money a person can take out of their retirement account uh, at the beginning of retirement was 4%, that that was the... That was the, the uh, rate at which somebody could safely withdraw money. And what that meant is that you would never run out of money. You could take out 4% of the initial amount, say so that a million dollars, you could take out $40,000, increase that with inflation every year and never have to worry about running out of money. Uh, one of the, and it's a, it's a great rule of thumb. If you're at 4%, what it means is you take your spending times 25, you can come up with a kind of a really nice thumb in the wind uh, dollar value or a target for saving for retirement. So really useful in a lot of ways. But one of my contentions that uh, the flaw of that is that it assumes that you take out that $40,000 and increase with inflation every year, forever and ever. Amen. And that's just not how life works. Now, in my personal experience, I've, you know, we've been around for a number of recessions, number of stock market crashes. And when that happens, people don't continue to spend more and more each year, right? And having some flexibility in your spending allows you to make some adjustments on things. So I've always contended that uh, that clients could actually take out more than 4% to the extent that they're willing to be flexible. And now there's been some research that's come out that uh, that's backs that up. And surprisingly, Bill Mangan was, is one of the people that, uh, that now says that 4% is probably too conservative. So I'll put a link to this article I was reading recently. It's from Of Dollars and Data. Longtime viewers will know that I really enjoy that, uh, the, the things that get published there. Um, but what basically one of the things that Bengen did is he said, hey, listen, back then I just used 50% U.S. stocks, 50% bonds. And now we've got 20 more years of, of data to, uh, to adjust to from that. And, and he said, listen, it's not just U.S. stocks and, and, and bonds. Let's add some small company stocks in there. And that raised the returns. And let's add international stocks and, and look at using some treasury bills instead of so cash, basically, instead of just bonds. And by putting together a more um, appropriate portfolio for how the, the things work today and the types of portfolios that people put together, he, he's calculated that the safe withdrawal rate is actually 4.7%. Right, it doesn't sound like a huge difference, four to four point seven, but that's almost a twenty-five percent increase in spending. Right, so significant from that. And he's written a new book, which is part of where this article came from. And the book had a a graphic, or the, the article had a graphic that comes from the book. And I'll pull it up here and and take a look. We can see on the left there is four point six eight, I guess, is the actual number. So four point seven safe withdrawal rate uh, with those the, that new uh, mixture of stocks and bonds. Uh, so hey, significantly above there, but I want to take a look at some of the other numbers in here, right? So this assumes again that we're taking out 4.7% and increasing for inflation every year. No chance of running out of money, at least historically speaking. But let's take a look at, and I'm, my eye jumps over to that 6% withdrawal rate number, right? It's a 75% chance of that you'll never run out of money. And to put another way, right, clients might might recognize this sort of language is, put it another way is there's a 75% chance that you'll never have to change anything. And then a 25% chance that you might have to adjust that spending some point down the road, right? It's not a 25% chance of failure. It's only failure if you're locked into that being your absolute spending that you must do increasing with inflation every year forever and ever. Right. And again, not how life typically works. And think about this difference between something around four and something around six percent. To the extent that you're willing to be somewhat flexible with your retirement spending, you can take out 50 percent more. Right. I mean, it seems like a, a like a small change, but four to six, that's an extra two. That's an extra 50 percent spending. To the extent that you're willing to say, and 75% of the time that works perfectly, you know, 25% of the time you might have to make some changes down the road, right? And in my experience, and it's all personal, but most people would take a 50% increase in spending with 
a three quarters chance that that works forever and ever in exchange for not a, a 25% chance we run out of money and crash a plane into the mountain, but a 25% chance that we have to make some changes down the road, right? And you take a look and you can even go down a little bit farther, go down to 7% withdrawal rate. Hey, half the time it works and we're almost talking about double that initial rate that people take for granted. So some really interesting things as we dig into some of that research. And of course, it's personally satisfying for me as I've been saying this for a while. And now the people that are smarter than I am are are putting in that research and coming up with those numbers of those things that I've seen from experience over the past 25 years. So that's what I'm thinking. As always, interested in knowing what you're thinking. You know, how, What do you think about the safe withdrawal rate and the idea of uh, having to make some changes down the road? Jot, jot a comment in the comment box. We'd love to have a conversation. And thanks, as always, for watching.